Uh, temptation, therefore, is a deception. That's why the Bible says we must yield not to temptation because it ain't real. Everything temptation promise you is a lie. Now, what a way to enter Monday morning. That means anyone who tempts you to do anything that's against God, it's a lie. It ain't true. If they promise you that if you do this and do that, this will happen, it's a lie. It won't happen. I used to wonder why God never explained consequences. He doesn't, you know. God says, thou shalt not commit adultery. And that's it. God just said it. Boom. Finish. He don't explain why. He don't go into details of how it messes up your memory, your, 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 your past, your conscience. I mean, as long as you live, you got to think with it, live with it. You got to, every time you see the person, you feel bad. You're saved now and still feel bad. Conscience, psychological problems, emotional problems, physiological problems. I mean, your body can't handle it. Your mind can't handle it. Your psychotic nature can't handle it. You got problems. God said, look, I, and I tried to save you all of this, you know. Sex before marriage. God says, thou shalt not fornicate. He doesn't explain the consequences. But when you fornicate, you know the problem. You got to sit here in church in the memory. Look at me and lie into me while you're sitting here. Deception. You look holy, smell holy, dress holy, but in your heart, you know you slept with somebody last night you shouldn't be sleeping with. I mean, it's just a mess, and, it, and your conscience bothers you, and you look over your shoulder every time. You ain't sure who watching. You ain't sure who knows. I mean, the mess that goes on. God's to try to save you all of that so you can walk with a smile and look people in the face without any shame. But he said, because you break the law, here comes this long list of consequences I tried to save you from. You see, this woman only knew the word die. Okay. Oh, man, this is good. See, God didn't tell Adam, listen, inside you is six billion people. Some of them in the Bahamas. They come in out later. And if you mess up, you're messing up six billion people, son. And now they're going to mess up and they're going to be broken homes. They're going to be incest. They're going to be gang wars. They're going to be drug abuse. There's going to be all kinds of corruption. There's going to be sin. There's going to be sickness, disease, tuberculosis, cancer. Son, don't do that. Don't touch the tree. God didn't. God just says today, you die. Die is a big word full of stuff. Temptation is a deception. So, let's go to bed just one night. Ain't nobody going to know. A deception. Because all that, not God, the whole heaven and the host. <laughs> Watching you. You better thank God angels don't squeal. <laughs> all of the hosts of heaven. Watching you sinning. You're talking about nobody know. Nobody know. You are what? Deceiving yourself. Temptation is a lie. This woman knew the consequences. See that snake? Let me tell you the process of temptation. First of all, he questioned the word of God. That's the first step to falling into temptation. Verse 4, Satan says, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. Knowing good and evil. Now what he should have said is, you would be like God and me. <laughs> but now remember, 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 they won't be like him. <laughs> That's the lie. See? He said, look, God knows that you will not surely die. Now, guess what? That hasn't changed, has it? He said, look, man, if you commit adultery, you know, a lot of people doing it and they still live it. They still go into work. They even sing it in the choir. I know some of them. So what's your big deal? We can do this, girl. Everybody else are doing it. They're doing all right. Matter of fact, in the Caribbean, you got to have a little thing on the side. It's deception. Every man in the Caribbean got an extra woman. But that's where the thought comes from. 
In other words, sin has become a culture. You won't surely die. Now, you'll die, but you won't surely die. Now, you can die now, yeah, but you won't. It ain't really as bad as God says it is. Sounds familiar? Temptation, eh? It's a deception. It ain't as bad as he says it is. And now, he said, let me give you a real temptation. If you disobey God, you'll become like God. Now, that's a corruption. Think about that. He said, if you disobey God, you'll become just like God. What kind of equation is that? He says, because God knows. This is an interesting statement. He's telling, the devil is an awesome deceiver. He's now telling them that God deceiving you. God knows. God is hiding from you the truth about what you could become. My God, what kind of temptation is that? God's trying to steal the good times from you. God wants you to have some fun, but he don't want you to have the real fun. He's trying to hide the fun from you. And I know the real fun. I got kicked out of heaven. <laughs> when a liar tells you something, it's a lie. It's a lie. Satan said to them, God is lying. How's that for corruption? I mean, Jake, first process of sin is we question God's word. Secondly, we, we have the knowledge of the consequences, but that doesn't protect us from the consequences. This is important. The Bible says that she said, Eve said, he said, if we do eat from this tree, we will surely die. Did she know what's going to happen? Yes, we'll surely die. She knew it. But that didn't stop her from doing it. Here's what we learned from this. Even though you know what you're doing is wrong, you still do it. And you know it's not going to be right. You still do it. Only God knows. Corruption to the core. Eve did not experiment. That's the point I'm making. When you are about to sin, that's not an experiment. You know the consequences. Knowing the consequences does not keep you from doing it. Isn't that amazing? Now, God don't give you details. Maybe if you gave details, you might hesitate a little longer. <laughs> You know, think about it today. Think about it today. They get ads on television every hour or so. Says, use a condom. You get AIDS if you don't have protected sex. And, and they talk about AIDS. And then they bring on a program and show you the AIDS patient wasting away, sores all over him. You know, in the bed, eyes popping out, belly sunken in. You see this and you say, mm-hmm, but that ain't gonna happen to me. When you look at the consequences, and you still go sleeping around. You say, man, well, I know my partner ain't got this. Ooh, what would partner? How many partners that partner partner with? You don't know? And the fact that they going with you and you all ain't married is a lie. So you know when they tell you they ain't being nobody else. That's a lie. So how can you? <laughs> don't deceive yourself. By the way, if you ain't married now, let me just give you some advice. You know, when I was growing up, uh, I guess I still growing up here, baby. Uh, we've been married for 22 years, going on 23 now. And when we first decided to get married, you know, and my father's, you know, my dad is here. He'd tell you when they get married in them, in them days, before you, you get, you know, f committed to get married, you take a blood test. Now, the blood test was to just check the blood type and to make sure that there was no possibility of any of, of abnormalities and so forth for having children and all that, you know, that kind of check you out. It wasn't the check for AIDS. But let me tell you now today, I don't care how much he loves you, how much she loves you. When they start talking about walking down the aisles, and look here baby, I love you, but I want to see the report. Bring the ring and the report the same day. And I want report first, then I'll take the ring. Because I ain't going to commit suicide with nobody. Come on, clap your hands anyhow. Praise God. It's a whole new world we live in. Whole new world we live in. Don't let them kiss you into death. Them stop, stop kissing me. Stop. Leave me. Leave me. Stop kissing me. I won't see the papers. Because life ain't simple no more. See? Because you don't know who they being with, man. And by the way, age is so subtle, it incubates for five years. Five years. That means the person could have the virus and it doesn't show up 
for five years. So they look fine. You married for four, fifth year, they start looking funny. And then all of a sudden, the revelation comes to you. Boom! And you go, ah. ah. Uh. Life ain't simple no more. She knew the consequences. But Satan explained the consequences away. He said, you ain't gonna surely die the way God said so you can die. What you can die from is not being like God. You can die from that. And then when you disobey God, then you will begin to live because you will be like God. What a deception. Let me tell you what Satan really was saying. You're smarter than God. Anybody ever thought so? You think it every day. God says, pay your tithes. You don't pay your tithes. You think you're smarter than God. God says, look, Israel, the reason why you're so poor, depressed, frustrated, and the locusts ate all your crop, and there ain't no prosperity in the city, it's because you rob me. How will we rob you? By tithes and offering. You get my tithes. If you give me my tithes, I'll open the window. Yeah, but you see, God knows I gotta buy this piece of, you know, this cream. I gotta buy this bread. God knows. God says, I don't understand. Don't try to discuss with me my own money. We do it all the time. God, we're smarter than you. you got, we ain't gotta pay tithes. God says, you oh, you remind me of Lucifer. Temptation is subtle. Now watch this. It's very interesting here. It says here that when the woman saw, and I want you to, to uh, <laughs> by the way, Satan says your eyes will be opened. Yes, it was. Open to what though? Let me tell you something, friends. That statement, eyes will be opened, has to do with conscience. Write that down. There's some things God doesn't want you conscious of. Because your conscience never goes to sleep. Let me tell you something. I found this out, you know, I never had sex until I was married. Never had sex until I was married. I was a virgin when I got married, 25 years old. Do you know, therefore I have no memories except my wife? What a beautiful way to live. Now some of you haven't done that. So you got all kinds of memories you got to live with. Now, what's, what, am, what am I trying to get at? God says, look, Satan says, look, if you disobey God, your eyes, your conscience will come alive. You cannot want sex if you never had it. You cannot need drugs if you never took it. Did you know that? You cannot need alcohol if you never drank it. You can never need a cigarette if you never smoked it. In other words, there are certain things God is saying, look, don't even introduce it to yourself. You don't want to know this right now. So God says, don't get married. I mean, don't have sex until you get married. Why? He says, I don't want you to want it until you got somebody who could give it to you legally. God is smart. I was telling the young people, uh, where was I? I was somewhere speaking to some young people this week. I think it was in Cleveland, Tenor, Cleveland, Ohio. And I was telling them they wanted me to share a little bit about, you know, how to succeed in life. And I told them this statement. I said, don't do anything that you don't want to enjoy remembering. There's some things you don't want to know. See, temptation is, is, is the desire to do something that you shouldn't know. That's why it's called the knowledge of good and evil. Right now, all you know is good. So Satan comes and says, some other things you could know, you know. You could know how it feels to disobey God. That's what? Evil. And the guy who instigated that got a D in front of it. That's why he's called the devil. He is the source, the big D of evil. He's the one who comes and tells you, and you ain't gonna surely die. Your conscience gonna come alive. You're gonna you're gonna experience things you never had before. Take some of this drug, this angel dust. Come on, just just puff on this reefer. For, man, listen, man, what I'm feeling, ooh, you can feel it too. Satanic stuff. Man, I had sex last night. God, man, you ain't know what life is until you had this. And that's temptation. See, they're trying to get you to experience something that you don't need right now. But once you've had it, see, that's the problem. Satan, as a Christian even, 
Some of you, I don't know nothing but your life. I ain't talking about nobody, okay? But I just know human nature, the way God made you. Once you open up something, honey, it's hell to close that back. That's why when you take your first hit of cocaine, bang! Woo! Hey! Woo! Woo! And then for the rest of your life, you're trying to get that back. And he knows about it. See, and once you, once you have sex, that's it. That's why God says, don't fornicate. That means sex before your marriage. And they say, don't commit adultery. Why? That's sex outside your marriage. Because once you taste that, it keeps going. Temptation is a powerful thing. It's a lie, though. I say, it's a lie. I mean, here you are, going with somebody who's married. What hope do you have in this? That's deception. He loves me. loves you. <laughs> he lying to his wife. You think he's telling you the truth? Come on, y'all talk to me, man. This, this, see, temptation is a deception. It's a lie. It's a lie. This is, this is, this is interesting. Uh, the, the next process of temptation is verse 3. He so said, you won't surely die. He's telling us to disbelieve God. Question God's integrity. Oh, God don't really mean that. You ever heard that? Sinners say it all the time. I'm talking about you. God don't really mean that. Let me tell you, God says, look, you die and go to hell, I can burn you, and the worm ain't going to never die, and the fire ain't going to quench. Now, you think God's joking, eh? She said, look, there was a rich man and a poor man. And he told the story, but the rich man went to hell. Poor man went to the paradise. Rich man says, whoo, I didn't know there was fire here. I'm burning. And then he says, Lazarus, just give me a little dip of water on your thing, on your finger. God says, no, ain't none coming. And then he told... He told Lazarus to, to, to go back to earth and tell everybody, don't come here. God said, there'll be no such trip. God means what he says. He says what he means. You eat from this tree, you surely die. Now, if you want to know what death is, then you disobey God. Let me tell you what, the issue here is not death. The issue here is the word. Keep my word. Don't disobey my word. Temptation is against the word of God. It's not against some fruit. The fruit is not the issue in temptation. The issue is the word of God. That's what Adam broke. He broke the word of God. Thank you for watching. Please, you can support our work and get access to full videos plus exclusive content on our Patreon page. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the likes button. Please share this with your friends and always check the video description for more fun stuff. Thank you and God bless you.